in the long run, passivity won't pay off. It never pays off. If you want a life of meaning and transcendence, you're going to have to move. Aggression doesn't have to be toxic or damaging. Healthy aggression risks. It builds new things. It breaks through barriers. It's the key to living a life that matters. I'm Brian Tome, and this is The Aggressive Life. Rob Kenny was 14 years old when his dad left without a stable mother. He moved in with his older brother, a newlywed living in a mobile home. He promised himself that one day he would be a different kind of dad. And guess what? He's keeping his promise. Rob's the creator, host, and father figure of Dad, How Do I? An insanely popular YouTube channel that took the internet by storm in a matter of weeks. His channel offers practical, quote unquote, I love this, dad advice for everyday tasks through the over 2.4 million, that's, uh, that's, that's why I said 2.4 million and climbing YouTube kids. He covers everything from how to jumpstart a car to how to fix a running toilet to how to iron a dress shirt. But dad, how do I, isn't just for the house projects and tool ideas. He gives a message of encouragement and wisdom and a bunch of corny joke. He's been called Mr. Rogers for adults and the dad you never had. He's my kind of guy. Welcome to the aggressive life, Rob Kenny. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. That was pretty, uh, a lengthy intro. <laughs> lengthy <laughs> intro. I'll tell you what, it is, it is painful. Can I just submit to you? It is painful for me to read that intro. Do you know why? Why? Because I could have done that channel, but I didn't. <laughs> I didn't think about it. You thought about it. Early bird gets the worm. That's amazing. Wait, wait, wait to go, Rob. Just, just give us the give us the background as to how the whole idea came to your mind. Yeah, it's something I've wanted to do actually for a, a number of years. I talked to my daughter. You know, I have two adult children, and we talk all the time about adulting type stuff. And um, and I, I've, like you said in the intro, I I didn't have a dad from when I was fourteen on up, and so I learned various things along the way raising my kids. But also, you know, I learned how to tie a tie from my my roommate um, when I was 20 um, and just picked things up along the way. And I thought, you know, I, and I go to YouTube for it. It's a pretty good resource, but there's a lot of bells and whistles that go off, you know, subscribe, do this, do that. And, you know, you spend a lot of time for that one minute nugget. And so I was trying to make my channel kind of a one-stop place where you could come and get not only tie a tie, but how to check your oil and how to do kind of the whole thing. So I'm slowly building my content. I had to slow down a little bit because I'm uh, I'm back to work, back to work now. So I'm trying to juggle it all. What do you, what's your day job? I'm in sales. I work for a company called Complete Office. We're actually owned by um, Office Depot. Well, brother, I got to tell you, I hate to tell you, but there's a new career waiting for you. <laughs> I'm just trying to take it slow, you know. I, I and I, I, one of my latest videos, I said, you know, hey, I got to get back to work because I've made promises, you know, and I'm a man of my word. I, I, I have customers that I've had for, you know, I've been doing this for almost 30 years, and so I just trying to take it slow. I don't think it's a good example to say, hey, this looks great. Let me jump in, you know, and leave right. this whole thing behind. Um, and so I've just been trying to take it slow and be wise about it. So you're obviously a humble guy. You're very rooted, yet your channel has gone viral. Again, 2.4 million subscribers. That's crazy. How's that sitting with you right now? Has this changed your life? Has this changed your perspective? What kind of learnings do you have about human nature? Do you have any learnings about our culture at large that would cause us to take off? And I just asked you four deep questions. Just just wax eloquent, Rob Kenny. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little surreal trying to get my head around it. Uh, you know, this is, uh, I had interview after interview after interview. And now it's, once Father's Day hit, I've had a chance to kind of get my head around it and get my feet under me and try to process everything. So I'm good now. I've uh, still, yeah, still doing okay. And I haven't been recognized in public because I'm wearing a mask everywhere. So that's kind of been <laughs> been a little handy. <laughs> But yeah, I, I don't know. I think trying to be smart about what, what I should do next with this whole thing. Because like you said, that so the sad thing is, is the, the, the lack of fathers in the world. It's not just in the U.S. It's all over the place. I'm getting, you know, Brazil, Argentina, Korea. It's I get notes from the Philippines, from, you know, the U.K., Australia. So it's sad. It's really, um, that's the part that I was try, trying to figure out. It's like, uh, wow, 
people have never heard they that they're from their parents that they're proud of them. It's really, really sad. And so part of my mission statement, though, was to encourage dads to, you know, if if you got off track, get back on track. We need you. You know, we need right. you to get back in the game. If somehow you've lost your way, don't hesitate. You know, you need to come back and humble yourself and get back in the game. This is the thing that a lot of people would not pick up seeing your videos. Again, folks, if you haven't seen them, what they are, what Rob basically does he takes questions that his daughters or anybody else would say, I got a running toilet. What do I do with the running toilet? My battery's uh, dead. What, how, how do I do with my battery's dead? My, these basic things that those of us who had a father figure often learn growing up, but we're don't, not learning. So people are kind of fixating on the how to DIY aspect of it. But the really sad underbelly here is there's a market for these videos because people haven't learned basic things from their dads that all of us who had dads back in the 60s, 70s, 50s, 80s, whatever, all of us had. And so it's really a um, revealing, I think, Rob, just a, a sad underbelly to how our culture is fraying and that we don't have male father figures that are passing on knowledge, not just you know physical hardware knowledge, but soft spiritual hardware knowledge. It's, it's, it's a difficult state we're in. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. No, I think that's, you nailed it. I, and I told my daughter too. So I have a daughter and a son. My son's 25. He's on the East Coast now. So I bring up my daughter a lot more because she's actually <laughs> close by. I, I, I told her when I wanted to start this, because, you know, obviously there's way more to being a dad than just running around fixing things, right? I mean, I, I want to encourage them, walk alongside them and discourage them when they're doing something that, yeah, you know, I, I can't approve of that. That's not you know, I still love you no matter what you do. I still love you. Anyway, so there's so much more uh, to being a dad. And I, I didn't wait, know how you mean, was... wait, you mean love as a dad doesn't mean you approve of everything your kids do? Wait, are, are, you <laughs> say, are you saying you can love somebody but disagree with their choices? No. I, I, thought, love, I thought love <laughs> meant that you approved of everybody. You told everybody do, the hell, do whatever the hell you want to do. Isn't that what love is? <laughs> Yeah, no, that's uh, unfortunate. I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, it, I tried to raise my, my kids and to be good adults by walking alongside them. And again, again, not approving of everything, but helping them understand why, you know, I, my daughter's very much, she wants a reason why I, she, you know, it, it wouldn't be good enough. I think, and this is kind of how I was raised early on was my mom would, you know, you just do it because that's what I tell you to do. Well, that's not going to be good enough for me when I go away to college and people are questioning my faith and questioning, you know, throwing all these things at me. I need to, uh, I need reasons for why I believe what I believe. Yeah. I had a, I had a quasi crisis with one of my kids recently where um, I caught them doing something that they knew that I would disapprove of. And when I say I caught them, I'm not saying I was looking for it. I mean, my kids are on their twenties, right? So it's not like I'm trying to find them and bust them on things. I, I never was, but this thing popped up, and I have to be very, very nebulous here for a bunch of reasons. And I had to talk with talk with my child about it, and um, you know, they knew that I disapproved. They knew that it was against standards I've laid down, and they're not ready to say that my standards are right either. By the way, but they also we left that conversation them having no doubt that. I love them and I was for them and I would always be behind them. When when we have a healthy dad, we've, we've seen that how you can be loving and just at the same time, how you can discipline and nurture at the same time. Is that what you're seeing? Yeah, no, I think that's, that's exactly right. And I'm a Christian. So I represent, want to represent the Lord. Well, Hmm. I kind of go back to, and I think of um, Jesus and his compassion um, on the people that, weren't religious, religious, you know, um, and he was harshest on the Pharisees, you know, the Pharisees claimed to represent God and they, uh, you know, Jesus would heal somebody on the Sabbath and then they get so caught up in the law that they're, and Jesus had no time for it, right? He, uh, he was harshest on them because they were claiming to represent God. And I think a lot of us Christians, I think, unfortunately, we, uh, we get caught up in what we don't stand stand for, and the media can play it up too. I'm not acting like it's all us, but I think you know it can be. Yeah. We, anyway, I'm just trying to help clear clear that up a little bit. I'm hoping to with my channel to help people understand that hey, I, I love you, man. I lo- I'm called to love everybody, but that doesn't mean I have to approve of everything you do. I, I read recently that your dad, 80 years old, 
he asked you for forgiveness for something. T- tell us about that. Yeah, so it was a, a little anticlimactic, but because I'm a Christian and I, you know, I, I, I've been forgiven much, I can't not forgive him, but he did ask for forgiveness. And then again, he was in his 80s by that time. So I'm kind of looking through him, you know, as we're talking. Um, and I just said, Dad, I, I'm a, I've been forgiven much. I forgive you. You know, it wasn't as big a deal, but I said some of my other brother, you know, another brother isn't. So I really want to make sure you talk to him so that he understands what a Christian is, you know, because my dad became a Christian um, near the end of his life. Yeah. Mm, Fascinating. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit more about your about your channel. Where did the idea originally come from on this? Yeah, it was just talking to my kids, you know, about adulting. And I thought it'd be a good resource to have a one-stop shop where people could come in and learn how to do things, you know. Um, but then early on, I could see that it was starting to resonate on a level that I had no idea. Because like you were saying, you know, uh, people were people were just watching my videos and crying just because I'm a dad shaving. <laughs> you know, it, it's not and it wasn't because I was so bad at shaving <laughs> or so good at it. It was that they'd never had that relationship with a dad so it just, they were bawling, just watching me tie a tie, you know, or changing a tire. I get so many emotional responses from from people saying, I've been thirsty, thirsting for so long, and I feel like I finally drank for the first time. Just like, listen, just watching me do something. So pretty, wow. pretty remarkable. I had no idea. I thought I was just going to be showing people how to do stuff. I, I hadn't thought about the shaving one. That That just brought back a massive memory to me. My dad... When I was a youngster, you know, he would shave in the morning, of course, like every do- dad does, old school, straight razor, you know. And I would sit on the toilet and just watch him shave, mesmerized. I just wanted to be with him. Yeah. I would just, I would just watch it. And uh, I, it never crossed my mind that, yeah, the majority of today's culture has never seen a man do that, let alone a dad do that. In, you know, a lot of comedies, dads are buffoons, you know, that are uh, to be made fun of and. I, I think people are seeing, wait a second, this is a guy that he's relatable and, you know, um, and he's trying to help me. What? And he's not yelling at me. And, you know, uh, so um, I'm hoping to, yeah, again, encourage dads to to step up, but also to help people understand that there there is a different way. You know, you can you have choices in your life. And I've also shared, too. When you're holding your baby, I'd like to think for the most part, people are make, promising them the world. Right. And then as your kid gets a little older, you start, you know, you have a bad day at work, you're dealing with all kinds of different things, you know, you're navigating life and you can kind of get off track. So one of the things I want to do is maybe have dads come up with a mission statement early on so that you, this is what I'm, my core principles that I want to stick to as we navigate life. So that if I get off, I want to, we don't want to do that. That's not what we're good at. We want to stick with this. And I think, you know, I'm all about trying to keep things as simple as possible fairly simple myself. So it probably helps. I think there, there's just so many simple things out there that people have not picked up because we're relationally fractured society. And it's just sad that we've got to pick these things up on the web. It's wonderful that the web exists. Wonderful. It's sad that we have to pick them up on the web because we're, we're void of people teaching us things, but man, I'm just, I'm just excited. There's a guy out there who saw opportunity and wanted to bless people and did a way to go, Rob. Seriously, <laughs> this, this is called the, this is called the aggressive life. This, you, you, you were a perfect example of the kind of things I'm hoping more people do. You saw an, an opportunity and you just did it. You just did it. And what do you know? More stuff has happened in your life than you would have ever, ever planned before. Have you ever thought about having 2.4 million people hang on your every word? Have you ever thought about that, Rob Kenny? <laughs> no, if you look at my videos, you'll know that I didn't think that because in, <laughs> in my shaving video, my shaving video was my second video. And in the back, I got a, um, a prescription bottle. I'm not playing a role. This is me. And so it, it hurts a little bit more if somebody says you know, they pick, start picking you apart. Thankfully, that hasn't really happened. I mean, you, you, get, you get haters. Wait a minute. You're getting people. You're getting people hating you for giving dad advice. I can't believe that. People, you say people on the internet are negative? No. <laughs> My subscribers are so awesome. They're, you know, uh, really defensive of their dad, you know, and, you know, you're going to get haters. You still have people that come in and dislike something where you're saying a sincere thank you or I'm proud of you. Why do you hate that? I mean, I don't I don't know what world you live in where you feel like you want to come in and dislike it. Well, here's one of the things that I, I've found in my, you know, my my job. I'm pastor by day. We've done 
We do this thing called Man Camp, which basically is trying to address the fatherlessness in so many guys. We've had 16,000 guys to go through that. When you see guy after guy, not just guy then, woman after woman who's broken from fatherlessness. One example is, gosh, about a year ago, this woman came up to me after we were done preaching Sunday services. And she says, hey, I just want you to know my, my husband my husband left me. I bring my daughters, and she pointed over to them over there. We bring them here every week. You've never met them, but you're their dad. And every time they come and they see you, they don't think about their dad who had an adulterous affair and abandoned the Christian faith. They look at you and they say, no, there's still dads and there's still men who were legitimate to who they are. And that just, that just wrecked me. I just utterly, utterly wrecked me that me as a guy who... I, I, I didn't even know their names at that point would be their the only father figure they know. And Rob, that's you. Way to go, man. Way to go. <laughs> I'm trying to do my best. But, you know, get your whole church praying for me. I, I'd appreciate that. I don't want to misrepresent God. I want to be faithful to him. Right. Well, and one of the things that happens, I think, is you get that criticism so much because there is a father wound inside of so many folks. So for some, they can't really separate your your physical advice on the running toilet from the pain they receive from their dad growing up. And so that, that father wound just caused people to lash out. So I'm sorry for that, man. That's tough. Yeah. Rob, are you ready for the lightning round? This is where I ask you a question and you have to do it quick, like chop, chop, like one or two sentences. Are you able to succeed in the lightning round, Rob Kenny? Uh Oh, <laughs> my connection's cutting out. I think I have to go. Oh, no, 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 no. You can, you can last a few more minutes. Here we go. What is something you did learn from your dad? Camping when we were young. He started well. So when we were young, I learned how to set up a tent and, and fish. He, he gave me a love for fishing. Great. What is something you wish you had learned from your dad that you could now share with people because you know that people ask this a lot? <laughs> There's a lot there. My dad left when I was going through puberty. So that was a real hard time. I, I mean, I don't know if we want to go there, but that was, you know, it's really hard. Um, and so with my own son, I tried to walk through that with him because that's tough. Changes are coming. You used to look at your friend that was a girl and then, oh my goodness, you're looking at her differently, right? So that, that was something that was really tough that um, I tried to navigate with my own son. I don't know if we wanted to <laughs> Wanted to go there yeah. necessarily, but um, yeah. No, no question. This is part of the sexual confusion, sexual dysfunction in our culture is we we don't have a father figure and mother figure working together to really help us understand sexuality, help us understand that stuff. I think one of the more aggressive things that I've done as a dad that I encourage other dads to do, and they, they oftentimes go, what? What are you talking about? I encourage everyone to be first to market with the sexual conversation with their kids and actually to talk ejaculation, talk erection, talk all kinds of stuff before their kids can even understand those words so that you can be first to market. So when they understand those words, they've actually heard them in the proper context and, uh, and they can actually be the, uh, they can actually be the authority who knew, knows more than their friends. Uh, and, and I just think that sexual conversation is everything. And I just see to my parents just passively waiting for, someone else to educate their kids about how sex works, who you should have sex with, all this, and I, I, it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. That's good. I think I just broke the rules already, the lightning round. See, I'm always the guy who breaks it because someone says something <laughs> so fascinating, I just go, okay, here we go. Let's yeah. get back, it's back to That was kind of deep, um, maybe. It should have been a lighter question, a lighter answer, I guess. Yeah, no, you can do you can <laughs> do deep and lightning round. The, the risk is just that I, I want to generally talk about it more. So <laughs> okay. that's all right. So deep is fine. The lightning round doesn't mean light. <laughs> lightning round just means a quick answer. Here we go. What would you say to a dad who feels like they missed their chance with their own kids? Humble yourself and go back and uh, ask for forgiveness. I think you need to do that as soon as you possibly can. And and people are quick to forgive if you own up to your mistakes. You, you see that in the media, you see that in anything. People that get caught in something and then they don't own up to it. That's the people that people have a problem with. If people admit, hey, I did this and I messed up, I, I need your forgiveness and I wanna make it right, whatever I need to do. And that's hard. Best thing 
a person can do who is bitter over the absenteeism of their father, best thing they can do to get over their bitterness. Wow. I've, and by the way, I've never had this many deep questions on the lightning round. I thought I, I really thought this is going to be about just changing light bulbs and changing tires. But I, I re- honestly, Rob, I didn't realize I was going to be uh, interviewing a person of the kind of depth that I have right now. So sorry to throw you some court curve walls here. But so go ahead. What would, what would someone do? Oh, that's that's kind of you. I would say forgiveness. I, I again uh, from the other side because I, you know, with my own personal experience, I, you know, I, my dad, I had I had hard feelings towards him for the longest time. But unforgiveness is like drinking poison and hoping the other person's somehow affected. Meanwhile, it's killing me, you know. And and people have a legitimate victim card. You know, we all do to some extent. I'm a victim. I'm just going to keep playing that. Well, meanwhile, your life's going by. You know, you, you know. I I think you need to take control of your own life and be responsible for your own self and try to do the best you can with your own life instead of pointing to that other person for what they did to you. Video that was the most fun to make? Probably just tying a tie because that, that got me in the game. Um, and it was only two minutes long and I tried to make it light. I, you know, I used the word dorky. Don't do that because you look dorky, you know, and uh, it's funny because even people said, oh, you shouldn't call people dorks. Come on, it's in fun. I'm not, you know, I'm not labeling anybody. I'm Gosh. just trying to, you know. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. Practical skill most lacking amongst adults today? Uh, I would say finances myself. And I'd like to touch on that at some point. I don't think we're taught well. I just don't think we're, you know, pe- most people live paycheck to paycheck. Shouldn't be that way. Pay, pay yourself first. You know, save for a rainy day, do all these different things that we're just not taught, you know. And then we people go into debt way too easily. Yes. Boys and girls, let me tell you what. You have a dad here. Listen to this dad. Very, very wise, very true. Most aggressive move you made as a dad. <laughs> I don't know what, what that would be. Um, becoming a Christian was a huge pivot in my life because I, I was raised yeah. Catholic and Everything kind of kicked out right as my daughter, my wife was pregnant with my daughter. My life kind of fell apart and all my plans of what I had fell out from underneath me. And I cried out to God skeptically. I was like, you know, uh, if you exist, please help me. I've got myself into a world of trouble here and I don't know what to do. And doggone it, if he didn't call my bluff, right? Mm -hmm. Then when he calmed the storm, I was scared. I was like, oh my goodness, you, I've lived like I, like you don't exist. And now... It looks like you do. And so I started searching him out to, you know, and that was, that was hard, you know, because, you know, what, <laughs> and yet I found that he's trustworthy, you know, he's not going to, you know, God has been so good to me. Um, yeah, that, I, I think that's been the, the, obviously the biggest thing in my life because it changed how I, how I saw my life. I see my life as uh, temporary, you know, um, it, it, this I, I was young and now I'm old and I'm, I'm not hanging on to this life because, you know, there's more than this life. How old are you when that happened? And how old are your kids? Yeah, it was right before my daughter was born. Um, oh, I was okay. 20, yeah, so I was 26 and I'm 50, 56 now. Another thing too, I, you know, I, I'll have a beer, you know, some people get hung up on that, but I also wanted to help my kids understand that, you know, um, I didn't want them to go to college and their good friends are drinking beer and they're nice guys, you know? And so right. maybe that was, might be considered an aggressive thing. I, I don't, didn't get hung up on things like that where I thought, you know, and some people will are very legalistic when it comes to that. And I, right. You know, I, I mean, obviously depending on what position you're in, it makes sense to maybe not drink, but. Um, well, we've all had no people or ourselves have been touched by alcoholism. So it's not a, it's not a small thing, but for a, a parent to just assume that their kids aren't going to, you know, be drinking or, or be even faced with it. That's just cluelessness. I, I, I told my girls, Hey, when you, I didn't, I didn't try to win the battle of when you go to college, don't drink. I tried to win the battle of when you go to college, don't ever take a drink from somebody that's pre-mixed that you didn't see mixed. Don't, you know, if you're going to drink, you see it mixed firsthand or someone brings you a beer that is unopened. Do not take a drink from somebody, you know, that it was mixed because, man, women are getting abused out there and not good. But uh, I mentioned that 
some people get upset about that, but hey, as dads, we're not here to win a popularity contest, right? We're here to we're here to help people and bless people, and I'm I'm excited that you're blessing people. Yeah, well, thanks. One more question, last question on the lightning round and for our interview. <laughs> what is your favorite dad joke? Knock knock. Who's there? Interrupting cow. Interrupting Move. cow. Who? <laughs> I had that. I haven't heard that one. All right, let me give you mine. What, what, what's a pirate's favorite letter? I. You think so, but it's the C. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You set me up with that. <laughs> <laughs> normally, normally people say, Arr. I is the same way, so it has the same thing. Well, hey, uh, Rob, this has been fantastic. How can people connect with you or follow up with your stuff coming out of here? Uh, yeah, just go to my YouTube channel, Dad, How Do I? And uh, check me out. And yeah, hopefully uh, I can help you out with some things. And I, again, I'll just continue to build content. I'm back at work for now and, you know, just trying to take things slow. Who knows what's going to happen in the future? But um, yeah, I already have like 22 or 23 videos. And I started reading a story, a children's book <laughs> once a month, too. And people really like that. I think some people were turned off. What is this old man reading a storybook? But I'm trying to, again, you know, trying to encourage people. And there's more to being a dad than just running around fixing things, trying to help people to rethink how, how they see a dad. Right. And reading a storybook with different accents, different voices, yeah. all that stuff, which us as dads did. I mean, my kids love when I read himself now reading to my grandkids and it's a fun thing. So yeah. All right, Rob, this has been fantastic. Welcome to the aggressive life. Thank you. <laughs> hey, thanks for listening. For more aggressive living, head over to Bryantome.com. Get signed up for the mailing list to get regular shots of positive aggression sent straight to your inbox. And while you're there, you can also find articles, podcasts, and books. I'm also active on Instagram. Search Brian Tome. Special thanks to the band Judges for the music. Aggressive Life with Brian Tome is a production of Crossroads Church, Cincinnati, Ohio.